Two Chairs No Waiting, episode number 188, George Lindsay, part two. Two Chairs No Waiting is brought to you each week by the fine folks over at Weaver's Department Store. Drop by over at Weaver's and pick up some great Mayberry items. They got all kinds of things over there, hats, DVDs, CDs, all kinds of stuff. They even got a board game of Mayberryopoly. Drop by Weaver'sDepartmentStore.com. Two Chairs No Waiting is also brought to you by donations from listeners like you. And I appreciate your support. Thanks you for it. So feel free to drop by and give a donation. Hello, everybody. I'm your host, Alan Newsom, and we're gl- I am so glad to have you with me on Two Chairs No Waiting, especially on this special uh, show here where we are honoring the memory of George Lindsay. Now, Mr. Lindsay, if you didn't see or don't remember, or if you're hearing this later, he passed away on May 6, 2012, which is uh, right now, it's only about a week ago. And last episode, number 187 of Two Chairs No Waiting, we did the first part of our tribute to uh, Mr. Lindsay. Uh, George was a, a really I can't I can't say enough about the man. He was so nice to me. He always uh, he was just always there, willing to talk to you, give you advice. He even told me how to tell a couple of jokes. You know, he explained, okay, you got to wait at this point. You know, you got to wait and let the audience catch up with you, and then go on with the joke. Uh, he was uh, he was that kind of person. He took uh, Tim Pettigrew who is our Goober tribute artist, he took him aside and even told him what order the pins and the the tire gauge and everything goes in his pocket there when he's dressed up like Goober. But uh, George did a lot of things like that. And uh, uh, the 15th annual George Lindsay UNA Film Festival, well, at that, it was held over in Florence, Alabama. And at it... Uh, They dedicated a theater back, this was March uh, 1st through the 3rd of 2012, just a few months ago at this point, a couple of months ago. They dedicated a theater, the George George Lindsay Theater. And as part of that, there was the George Lindsay Theater and the Ernest Borgnine Performance Hall. So both Mr. Borgnine and Mr. Lindsay spoke at the dedication of this theater. So what we heard last week, and if you didn't hear it, I definitely encourage you to stop right now, head back over to the podcast from last week, and listen to it. It was uh, It's number 187, so you want to go and listen to that, because it's the first part of what we're about to hear the second part of tonight. And just uh, this is Mr. Lindsay's last public appearance. It was at the University of North Alabama over in Florence. And we are so lucky to be able to have this, and I am so glad to be able to share it with you. So uh, let's get on into it and hear some more from Mr. Lindsay. Uh, Andy Grove is just a great leader, a great person. Uh, made you enjoy your work. You could, uh, uh, if you want to change the script, uh, you could. He would go along with it. It, it was just the perfect job for me. I am. Uh, and then I got eat all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I met uh, Junior Sniffles and I said, he's not real. <laughs> but I want to work with him. He, he's not a real person. <laughs> but he got along. He did his thing. And uh, I guess that's what everybody does is, you know, to you know, enjoy being successful, and uh, I, I go into this school is uh, if I do have a success, it, it's been a, a great factor in my in my success because uh, I, I just sometimes think what would have happened if I hadn't gone to school there and uh, and gone into the show business. I would have been a business person and made a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lindsay. Yeah. Do you travel back to Jasper very often? Do I get back to Jasper very often? Yes, sir. I think they moved it. <laughs> when was the last time you had a great top barbecue? 
I don't go to those kind of places. No. <laughs> <laughs> if you've been there, then you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do I think Jasper's still driving? No, they're not. Oh, how do you know? <laughs> I live near there. <laughs> uh, anybody over here? Dad. <laughs> That's my son. <laughs> Yes. What was the toughest thing about being on the Amy Griffith Show? And there wasn't anything tough. Yeah, I guess learning the script every week. But, uh, and going home and uh, having your older children make fun of you. <laughs> <laughs> I just hate it when you call me Mr. Pyle. <laughs> That's my son, George. Great guy. Story for the football sto uh, story about you playing uh, quarterback at UNA. You know, you, you really you had to play and get your scholarship or you couldn't go to school. Coach well, Self was a big influence on you, wasn't he, George? What? Coach Self? Yeah. Big influence on you. Yeah, he was an All-American of Alabama, and he was tough. I think he had to be tough to play college football. I'm not saying I was tough, but I was, uh, I faked it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you talk about playing football with Harlan Hill? Knowing Harlan's background, uh, there wasn't much you could say when he was All-Pro. <laughs> all pro in and everything. He said, well, I lettered. He said, well, that don't mean much. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I went here on a scholarship, a football scholarship, and I got it, and uh, played on it for two years, and, uh, and, and enjoyed every minute that I was playing football. I wasn't the best student in the world. Yes, I was. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful memories of, uh, of the guys you played with, and, uh, like Harlan and, and Joe L. Moore and, uh, and, and uh, all these guys. And, and you, I, you actually become a, a part of the community and part of this town. I don't know how many times I stood in front of Troll Bitches and wanted to eat an ice cream, <laughs> and I didn't have any money. <laughs> My years here, Oh, will never be forgotten. They're just uh, great. I wish you could relive them, but uh, like I said, I worked a funeral home and it wasn't possible. <laughs> 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 Let's visit some more. Anybody else? How did you get the role of Hoover on the Andy Griffith show? <laughs> well, I flunked out on Dylan Gomer. <laughs> <laughs> I auditioned okay. in, uh, in Hollywood. I got the role and uh, worked out. Jim is, uh, Jim Neighbors is from Silicon and uh, believe me, he's a good one too. Dr. Nancy. Yeah. <laughs> did you have any problem learning to speak Southern? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're, you have uh, three strikes against you when you got a Southern accent when you go into business. You go in the action business because they don't they won't hire you. But I did some uh, uh, some Twilight Zones and some uh, uh, Hitchcocks and uh, I did a Hitchcock called The Jar that I'm very proud of. It uh, it was uh, considered one of the best Hitchcocks there ever was. I did about five Hitchcocks. I, I I got I got real. I was very lucky when I went to Hollywood. And, and I seemed like I just got there at the right time to get jobs and work, and it seemed like that one job uh, led to another one, and uh, that's kind of the way it is. But I always wanted to be a cowboy, I, you know. I never got to be, well, I did a couple of gun smokes, but uh, our man's always scared the fire out of me. <laughs> He's a big old man. If I had it to do over again, I'd do it. 
the same way. Uh, because it's nothing more exciting than acting. It's not everything I had hoped it would be. I really, I really am proud of my work and, and proud, proud of uh, what it's been able to accomplish. God, that was good. Uh, <laughs> Well, here that wrote the Andy Griffith Show book, Jim Clark. Jim. Well, George will not only be here for the duration of this program and its reception, but through the weekend. So we'll all have a chance to quiz you deeply, George, on on matters of great importance as the weekend progresses. So I just wanted you to be aware. Well, I saw the theater today, and I must say. Great. Thank you. Just great. <laughs>that was uh, a great experience to be over there and to be uh, able to just see and hear George uh he was uh at the time he was uh he was in a wheelchair at the time but not because uh, you know he just was weak he wasn't uh terribly sick or anything at that point he had been sick and uh but he was recovering from that and he was just weak couldn't walk well uh but he he was uh you know, you can hear his he was as clever and uh, funny as ever it was great to see him and uh, just to uh, be a part of that event. And I hope you guys have enjoyed getting to hear that as we've uh, just been remembering George. Now, I want to encourage you, too, if you haven't ever listened to him, the first four episodes of Two Chairs No Waiting, uh, the podcast itself, the first four episodes are George. So they're about George Lindsay. There is it's an interview I did with him back in 1998. So I want to encourage you to go back and listen to those first four episodes. They're short because at the time I was keeping the podcast very short, about 10 minutes, 10 to 12 minutes long. So I split the interview into four parts. So you should be able to listen to them fairly quickly. But it's a great interview. And just to give you a uh, (laughs) – I don't know if I tell this during the the podcast or not, but I had never interviewed anyone at that time. And George, uh, being the – great guy he was he, we were over at jim clark's and i said george i'd like to do an interview with you and put the audio on the website and this was in 1998 i said i'd never done that before i i, I don't know how to interview anybody uh so you know would you be willing to do that and he said sure so i turned on the uh tape player and uh, started recording and basically george sat there and asked himself questions and then answered them <laughs> Now, if you listen to the podcast, what you'll hear is me asking the questions and him answering them. That's because when I came back, I recorded myself asking the questions and then edited it back together. (laughs) But I cheated. You know, I didn't know how to do that. And uh, he was teaching me. He taught me. He taught me how to do this podcast, basically, uh, without even trying. That's what he was doing. And uh, I appreciate that a lot. Now, We've got a lot of uh, emails. A lot of uh, people have written in on the website. There's a website. If you go to uh, if you go to the imayberry.com website, there's a memorial section there. And right now, currently, uh, it's it's got a George Lindsay right at the top of the page. So if you're you're listening to this anytime in the next month or so, around May sixth, uh, two thousand twelve, you'll be able to find it there. If not, there's always a link on the website to the Mayberry Memorials. It has all the memorial sections uh, for our cast members that we've lost or crew members, things like that. But you can go in there and share your thoughts about George and leave him a little memorial, at least for some period of time. That'll be open for fans to go in and make comments and leave messages uh, for Mr. Lindsay and just tell what he meant to you, all kinds of things like that. Uh, but we've also had people writing in to the podcast, and I got this one from uh, Stan, Stan Orr. He wrote in and said, Hey, Alan, after hearing about the loss of George Goober Lindsay, I have a thought, uh, I have thought so much about what were my favorite moments in such a great career. I, of course, loved him as good old Goober, but often watched him on Hee Haw and on the Nashville Network. But then I got to thinking about uh, this morning what it would have been like to have seen him for the first time on the Andy Griffith show. I was only two when the show started and six when George made his first appearance as the lovable mechanic 
who wouldn't uh, who wouldn't put his mother in a dirty car. <laughs> to the people who watched the first four years of the Andy Griffith Show uh, and had heard his name mentioned so many times through his cousin Gomer, they had uh, to wonder what this fellow Goober looked like. What did he sound like? His character has such strong presence even before he was ever on the show. What a great relief for the people watching in 1964 when George appeared for the first time and uttered those famous words, Judy, Judy, Judy. (laughs) It would have been hard for me to believe that anyone else could have played the character of Goober better than George. He will always be Goober in our hearts. And while so... And while so very sad to hear of George passing, he has to know, looking down from heaven, that for many, many years to come, he will continue to put a smile on our face. That's the actor of the man. But the man himself, George Lindsay, will be missed by so many and remembered as a kind, caring, giving man who raised over a million dollars for the Alabama Special Olympics. God bless you, George. Stan. Hey, th- thank you, Stan. For riding in with that that's uh that is so so true and i've got another voicemail i wanted to play for you too and this is from larry so let's uh let's hear from larry here about george hello alan larry granger here i've shared the long version of this story with you i'm going to share the reader's digest today i'm a pastor in mount julia tennessee there was a wedding one saturday night in our church I knew ahead of time George Lindsay was going to be the godfather of the bride and would give the girl away. I was out of town. Someone told George Lindsay that I was a great Andy Griffith Show fan, and so he wanted to see my office. They took him to my office. I have a lot of Andy Griffith Show paraphernalia and pictures in my office, one of which is a goober hat someone gave me. And uh, goober asked, or George Lindsay asked to call me. And so they called me on my cell phone. We talked for a good while on the phone. I found out later on that while the whole time he was talking to me, he was wearing my goober hat while we were talking on the phone. And uh, we talked a little bit about the University of Alabama, the University of North Alabama. And uh, the last thing he said to me, he said, Hey, Larry, i got one more thing to say to you. I said, What's that? He said, Judy, Judy, Judy. And that's the, that's, uh, the memory that I'll have of George Lindsay for the rest of my life. Thank you. <laughs> Larry, hey, thanks for calling in and sharing that memory with you with us all. Uh, George did a lot of things like that. And uh, can you just imagine being on the phone and him on the other end? You know when he is at your office, but you couldn't be there. <laughs> and he's doing Judy, Judy, Judy at you. Wow. I got to tell you, uh, George, again, he, I, I, I'll miss him. Uh, greatly now uh, i got to attend the uh it was the funeral service in nashville this past week and as part of the uh funeral service they uh during the visitation before the actual service actually uh the cast of hee-haw there was a great deal of them there the cast and crew members from hee-haw were there now, to end the show tonight, we're going to play this at the end, and that's just the way we're going to end the show. Uh, but uh, George actually put it in his will that at the funeral, the cast should sing the song, and excuse me here, <laughs> she was gone. <laughs> I don't know how you say PFFT except for that. You, you know the song from Hee Haw, in honor of George. So... The visitation service that was actually done, and it was it was a very fitting tribute just for a man who made us laugh and smile uh, for so many years. And, you know, I wanted to be able to play that for you uh, as well as a way, a fitting way just to close out tonight's episode of the podcast. Uh, I want to ask if you've got any memories of George that you want to share, please Call me at 888-684-8415, or you can email me at floyd at imayberry.com. You can drop by our Facebook page at facebook.com slash two chairs, or you can go by twochairsnowaiting.com itself and leave a message. 
So, folks, keep a smile on your face and remember Goober with that smile. And we'll see you guys next week on Two Chairs No Waiting. So, here we go the cast from Hee Haw. You are the funny man.